Marvel seem to be breaking the internet with huge movie news on an almost weekly basis these days. We all got excited about the Age of Ultron trailer, but now they've announced Phase 3, what does it really mean for the MCU? We're here with the 10 things you need to know about Marvel Phase 3. Ant-Man's been in the pipeline since way back when, and following repeated delays, it almost became inevitable that he'd wind up opening Phase 3. Well, that ain't the case anymore, because not only will he not be opening it, he won't even be a part of it. Instead, they're extending Phase 2. So now, instead of ending with Age of Ultron, it'll be ending with Ant-Man as a sort of light breather to follow it up. While we eagerly await the confirmation of Cumberbatch to play Doctor Strange, what we do know is that Black Panther will be portrayed by Chadwick Boseman, who just dominated the role of James Brown in Get On Up. It seems like a bit of a weird trick to give the role to a relatively small actor, but he's very good, and he just signed a five-picture deal, so Marvel must really believe in him. Just as DC have announced that the Justice League is going to be a two-parter, Marvel have also announced that Avengers 3 will be the same. But the reason why they're doing it rests solely in a legal loophole. RDJ, Hemsworth and Evans will all be contractually clear after the completion of Avengers 3. So instead of making them sign larger multi-picture deals, which they're probably not going to be happy to do at that point, they can split the film into two, which the law sees as a single film in two parts. So Marvel get more bang for the buck, and we get more Iron Man, Thor and Cap. Win-win. There's something very final about the Infinity Gauntlet Infinity Wars story arc, but Kevin Feig stated that although there isn't much in the way of solid planning beyond the third Avengers picture, it won't be the end. He has stated it may be the end for some of the characters that started on the journey, but it's far from over. RDJ being confirmed for Cap 3 was huge enough, then they announced it will be adapting Civil War, one of the biggest, most beloved arcs in all of Marvel history. The internet exploded. If you haven't read Civil War, the story pits Marvel heroes against each other in a battle of belief, honor, and identity. It's massive, and it's massive for a reason. It's just phenomenal. That being said, Marvel have confirmed the Civil War will be condensed into a one-picture deal only, unlike the sprawling, massive comic version. The news is a bit of a letdown, but they have confirmed it's going to affect the wider MCU, and it ties directly directly into Thor Ragnarok, so we have that to look forward to too. Marvel have always been happy at reducing characters through supporting roles in other films, so it was no surprise when Black Panther was confirmed as appearing in Cap 3, which will hopefully lead to his standalone release being an origin story because he has one of the best in the Marvel Universe. There are also some strong rumours about Andy Serkis portraying a certain Ulysses Claw in Age of Ultron, which will be totally amazing if it ties into the Black Panther film. One of the sucky things about the MCU is the absence of the X-Men. While Fox are absolutely nailing it with First Class and Days of Future Past, it'd be nice to see them alongside some of our other favourite heroes. This ain't gonna happen anytime soon though, so we've just gotta accept it. But what we are getting in the future is an Inhumans film. The Inhumans, while not mutants, are highly advanced beings with ties to the Fantastic Four universe, and it's a pretty big move for Marvel to pull them out. We may even see some of the Inhumans taking over some of the X-Men roles in the wider story arcs. It's gonna be awesome. We were expecting a Hulk or Black Widow announcement with the Phase 3 press event. They've been going down really well with the fans, and for the Hulk to spring back from two failed launches is a pretty great thing. Feig has stated that while there were no announcements at the moment, both characters will play a major part in future Avengers and Phase 3 movies. Ruffalo only has a six-picture deal too, so he needs to be used sparingly. Hopefully we'll see a Black Widow flick and World War Hulk in Phase 4. While die-hard Marvel fans are probably losing their minds over the Inhumans and Black Panther, general audiences are most geared up for Iron Man 4. There have been both confirmations and denials from RDJ himself following the Civil War announcement. Feig remained tight-lipped about the whole thing, not wanting to give the game away with Cap 3, but he has stated that Iron Man 4 is a definite possibility moving forward. The bigger question though is, do we really need an Iron Man 4 with all of this new talent being brought forward? Usually the way it works in superhero films is adaptation. They need a balanced source material with widespread cinematic appeal. Marvel aren't really one to sit still, and they've turned it on its head by creating comics that'll feed into the future film releases, particularly Phase 3. This was more recently tested with Guardians of the Galaxy. Marvel prepped for the film release by launching several stories, including characters such as Iron Man and Agent Venom to draw attention to the franchise. Obviously the effect this has is questionable, but you can't deny Guardians' success. It's quite clear Marvel know exactly what they're doing. What do you expect from the upcoming MCU movies? What could the future hold? Get the Marvel discussion going in the comments below, and please remember to subscribe.